What's going on guys? This is Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ. We're going to be talking about a couple guys that you can get once all the big dogs are gone, all the Gurleys, the Bells, the Melvin Gordons, the Alvin Kamaras, etc. So a couple guys that have RB1 potential or it could be RB2, you know, once you grab one of the big guys, you know, they have a one-two punch. So if you go running back, running back in the first and second round, you'll be sitting pretty good because there's not many running backs that you can get after that. So let me talk about a couple guys that you can get that have potentially RB1 and then some guys that have more risk than reward that you might want to stay away from. So let's get right into the episode. First guy we're going to be talking about is Joe Mixon. He's going to have a sophomore stud. He's going to have a breakout year. He's going to have all of that. ADP right now is at 30, RB15, 626 yards, four touchdowns on 178 attempts, and he averaged three and a half yards per carry, which isn't terrible. But he didn't really have that impressive, you know, big, big rookie year. But his running back situation right now is looking great. They revamped the O-line. They went to the draft, they grabbed that big center, Billy Price from Ohio State, 6'4", 300 pound bully, throwing guys around all around the middle. So that opens up more opportunity for Joe Mixon to get those touches, get through the holes, you know, get a couple touchdowns out of it. They even traded for Corey Glenn, the left tackle. So it looks like they're pretty serious about establishing that old line. So Joe Mixon's going to have a pretty good year because most of the time he was hit before, you know, the ball was even handed to him. Like, what can you do? I mean, the old line was ranked 30th last year, you know, 24th pass and 32 runs, so it was all messed up for Joe Mixon last year, but and he showed some flashes when he got the opportunity, I mean, he's even dropping weight, you know, he checked in last year at 244, he's now at 224, so he's trying to get that more Le'Veon Bell, you know, body type, so you gotta love when running backs lose weight and try to make it all muscle and makes them more, you know, quick speed, you know, that adds more agility to them, so... I mean, I'm feeling like, you know, Joe Mixon can probably have 250 touches, 1,000 yards this, this season. So he's a great pickup, to, you know, once all the big dogs are gone. So this next guy we're going to be talking about is Alex Collins. ADP 41, RB 20. He had 973 yards rushing on 212 attempts. That's a solid RB 2 running back right there. He had a amazing seven-game stretch. He was a waiver wire here for some of these people in the season. He had a breakout year in 2017. He's still young at the age of 23. He had 19 plus carries in one game. He is the bell cow for Baltimore Ravens right now, I believe. I mean, there's plenty of upside. His ceiling is amazing. He's a big back. He runs violent. Reminds me of Marshawn Lynch. O-line was ranked fourth last season, even with them missing two major pieces to their O-line, people, due to injury. So, he showed week in and week out that he can be the bell cow, that he can put people on their back basically because he was averaging three yards after contact so he's proven that he can be the lead back for that Baltimore Ravens backfield so even with the offense seeming pretty mediocre not really you know doing well every week he tended to trend upward 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 game after game week after week it showed that he was getting better that he can take on that lead job he could take on that workload that he could be a rb1 for the baltimore ravens the only downside that some people might think about his adp value is that the baltimore ravens are so in love with kenneth dixon he was suspended last year and he was also injured so he missed a complete year so they opened up plenty of opportunity for alex collins to be that guy to be that bell cow so I know you guys are worried about it, but I wouldn't worry too much about Kenneth Dixon cutting into Alex Collins's, you know, touches, reps, or whatever the case may be. The Ravens seem like they mean business. They went and signed Willie Sneed, Michael Crabtree, and John Brown. So that's probably the deepest their wide receiver core has been in a very, very long time. So that's good news for Alex Collins. That's plenty of opportunities that he can get a lot more looks, a lot more touches. So he could be on the field more often. So he's also good at pass blocking. So... I can see him being on the field the majority of the time. Next guy we're going to be talking about is my dude, Jarek McKinnon. ADP 23, RB 13, 570 yards rushing, 51 receptions, 421 yards on 68 targets. I know that doesn't sound crazy impressive, but he is the guy in San Francisco. 
Kyle Shanahan loves this guy. He talked so much about him that he just loves this guy, what he can do with him. Like, the things he can do out the backfield, screens, you know, he could put him in a slot probably. Like, this guy could do everything. So, yeah, there was a bit of a lot of three-headed monster running back situation going on with the Vikings with, you know, Dalvin Cook, Latavius Murray, and then Jared McKinnon. So, you know, we all know once Cooks got hurt, you know, that's when Latavius Murray started getting more more reps, and, you know, that's where Jared McKinnon started, you know, getting passes out the backfield. You know, the offense kind of evolved. So, San Francisco gave him big money. So, they gave him $30 million, four-year deal, signed him as being the starter. So, that great news there. So, there's no really worried about any running back, you know, competition going on in training camp because there's not many people there that can take that starting role from him. So, he will be on the field more often than ever. So, I can imagine a lot of check downs, you know, screens to McKinnon. So, it's plenty of ups upside with this offense. So, 250 touches for sure, which is a RB1 load, workload. So, he's an all-around back, you know. Even after Dalvin Cook tore his ACL, McKinnon was ranked RB10 in PPR league. So, that is amazing. So, his ADP is no hype. He is the real deal. But, I know a lot of people saying, no, I'm not taking the second round with Jarek McKinnon. Okay, well, good luck after, you know, the third, fourth round. He won't be there. So, you, you want a guy that's going to get those touches, who's going to catch that ball in PPR leagues. Full point, half point, whatever the case may be. So, one of the first guys I want to talk about is Kenyon Drake. More risk than reward because of his running back situation, what's going, over, going on over there in Miami. ADP right now is at a 39, RB17. He had 644 yards rushing. He had uh, 4.8 yards per carry, three touchdowns, two fumbles. Now, his ADP skyrocketed for us to assume that he's a solid RB1, RB2, but let's just pump the brakes real quick. Miami have added two running backs to their, <coughs> to their stable. They added Frank Gore, and they went to the draft, and they drafted Kalen Bollage. And he's basically a bigger size Kenyon Drake. So, you know, that's not looking too good for the Dolphins believing that Drake can take on that bell cow, that, you know, solid workload that, you know, RB1s have. So, I don't believe that he will get 250 touches, which is RB1 workload, but I just don't see it with, you know, a more dependable, a more seasoned, a vet, veteran Frank Gore. So... He's definitely more consistent than Drake also. But he did have an impressive season last year, you know, a 10-game season with, you know, William, Williams being hurt, you know, with Jai getting traded to the Eagles. So it opened up more opportunity for Drake to look like he can take on that starting role. But with the Dolphins addressing, you know, the running back situation in the draft and in free agency signing Frank Gore, so it doesn't really look like, you know, the Dolphins believe that he's the clear-cut starter. So you got to pump the brakes on him. So there's too much... You know, running back battle going on in training camp, so it's more risk and reward. You know, drafting him, you know, to be the guy once all the big dogs are gone, and you know, you can't really get a one-two punch if you do have, you know, your first-round pick being a running back, and then you go second or third. You know, trying to pick him up, so I, I just don't see it. So it definitely scares me with two running backs being in the mix. You know, adding on to Drake, but you know. It's just not a good situation for him right now. I mean, I don't see him carry on, you know, what his stats were last year and to this year to, you know, progress. But that's not really looking good for him. I believe he's overvalued. I believe that, you know, you'll be taking a lot of risk taking him where he's at currently on his ADP. If you want to get, like, a guy that, you know, you could wait on, that probably have a better running back situation, probably, you know, less value, but more of a ceiling than Drake would be Marlon Mack. His running back situation is definitely better than what it is in Miami. So for PPR leagues, Kenyon Drake, you know, in college he was catching tons of balls out the backfield, but he was ranked ninth worst running back with the drop passes. So it's kind of weird that he did so good, you know, in the backfield, catching balls out the backfield, and then he gets to the NFL and, you know, not doing, you know, great, but he's not really catching, you know, balls that he should be catching. So to be, you know, top 10 worst running back catching passes out the backfield isn't something you want to brag about or you want to jump on and pick him. 
there's just too many questions right now for Drake's situ running back situation. So, me personally, I would pass on him. I wouldn't really jump the gun on him, you know. I wouldn't just be okay, solid, you know, RB2 on my team with Kenyon Drake in his running back situation. So, I would definitely pass on him. This next guy, I hate putting on this list. You know, he, he's a great running back. You know, Deion Lewis. I really hate that I had to put him on the more risk and reward list, but it is what it is. I mean, his ADP right now, 64 overall, RB25. He had 896 yards rushing on 188 attempts. So, he's averaging 5 yards per carry. So, everything looks great. 32 receptions, 214 yards receiving. So, everything looks great. All fine and dandy, but pump the brakes. His health is will play a major role into his value because this is he hasn't really had a clear cut productive season to where he proven he could stay healthy. He's amazing if he's healthy. But right now he's joining the backfield with Derrick Henry who's the clear cut bell cow, the bulldozer is going to be killing guys this year and it's just his health will play a major role into if you want to spend that pick on him, you know, it, it's it'll suck if you you know have him as your RB two or even your flex, and this guy's out week four, and it's like the rest of the season you're like I could have picked up a guy that's more dependable and more healthy, and you just you just don't want to be asked out basically. So like, you know, with Henry over there being the clear cut and you know power runner and you know Dion being the second thought to be the you know change of pace catching balls out the backfield, which is great for ADP, but it's like. Health plays a huge role into this. I can only stress that so much because his value is great, but with that being in the back of your mind, like, do I want to draft this guy at this position? You know, being that there's not many running backs out there, more safer picks out there. So, buyer beware if you guys do love Deion Lewis and you guys want to jump the gun on him. You know, it's just my opinion. Another guy I want to talk about is Carlos Hyde. Currently, his ADP is at 79, RB 36. It's at 938 yards rushing, 240 attempts, 3.9 yards per carry is what he did in San Fran. Eight touchdowns, two fumbles. I do not believe that will carry on into, you know, onto the Browns, being that they got a bunch of running backs back there. They're, it's a complete mess. Me, personally, I'm staying away from the Browns running back uh, stable. Being that, they got Duke Johnson. He's a third down back. You know, he's an all-around back. He's catching balls out the backfield. Solid flex player. You know, they even tried to put him in the slot last year. They're, they're trying to do everything with Duke Johnson. So that's definitely something to keep in mind with Carlos Hyde's reps. So you got the rookie they drafted, Nick Chubb, which is a bulldog. Complete, complete great pick for the Browns because what they're saying is they're not too sure who's the starter, who can be the starter, or what's going on in that running back situation. I mean, the wide receiver core is beautiful right now with Josh Gordon, Jarvis Landry, and they got Tyrod back there. And don't forget about the guy, Corey Coleman. So, a bunch of stuff going on right now in the Browns. Me, personally, I'm going to stay away from the Browns running back situation because it just, it just doesn't feel right. And half the time, the Browns don't even know who's going to be their starter. So... I'm not taking any chances with that. I mean, it's hard to believe that Hyde would be the, you know, a stud, would be the RB1 or even RB2 with that complete mess back there. So, I mean, his snap count in San Fran was amazing. He was third out of all running backs. So, that's behind Bell. That's behind Gurley, you know, with the snap count. So, he was on the field most of the time, but it was just not numbers you would think in Kyle Shanahan's offense that, you know, that he would produce. But... I'm not taking any chances with Carlos Hyde. I'm not taking any chances drafting him, you know, at all. So there's plenty of other value. There's plenty of other guys that you can get instead of having, you know, a terrible running back situation with too many heads, too many mouths to feed. It's, it's just not looking good. And that wraps up my first episode of Real Deal Fantasy HQ. Hope you guys liked the video. If you guys can do me a favor, like and subscribe for me and hit that bell so you can get notifications when more videos come out. I'll see you guys later. Peace.